Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today, uh, because I wanted to follow up <clears throat> on an older video, I will briefly summarize some of the most important knowledge about zero. Okay, so zero is not a number, first of all, contrary to what you've heard from your, you know, ignorant mathematics lecturers and teachers. Zero has never been a number. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to give you links to, uh, let's see, six articles on which I've talked about zero and I explain what is zero exactly and what is its role in mathematics. Okay, so zero is not a number, definitely not a number of any kind. Okay, doesn't belong to the class of numbers. Now, <clears throat> you have field medalists today who don't understand what is a number. Fools like Terence Tao and I don't know how many able prize winners there are. None of them have understood what is a number. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> here's a quick discussion <clears throat> I had with some somebody called Marcus. And I think he's from one of the Scandinavian countries, but I'm not sure. So he says, what about the case of multiplying by x minus 1 over x minus 1 when x is equal to 1? Is that, the, still, is that still the same as multiplying by 1? Now, first of all, that first question is not even wrong. x minus 1 represents a number. Otherwise, you cannot multiply by it. Okay. Similarly, x minus 1 over x minus 1 represents a number. Because if it doesn't represent the number, you cannot multiply by it. What does that mean? That means that you can't have 0 over 0. It's nonsense. You cannot multiply by 0 over 0. Now, I don't know of anyone who has a modicum of brain cells who would say, can you put x is equal to 1? First of all, you don't put anything in a statement like x minus 1 over x minus 1. Do you understand that? Okay, listen. Listen carefully, especially if you're a professor of mathematics or an Abel Prize winner or a Fields Medal winner, because the majority of you are fucking morons. Okay, let me explain something to you. There is a proposition called Proposition 12, of Euclid's elements, and it's in book five. All of your arithmetic with numbers is based on the single proposition. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. You have to study a lot to understand it. It's easy once you, once you complete the study, but until you do that, you don't know shit about mathematics, okay? And so you don't understand what is a number. You have no clue what is a number. I was the first to rigorously and uh, succinctly define a number and give its definition. Even Euclid didn't actually manage to get to that point, although he did understand what is a number because uh, Proposition 12 tells you how you can uh, find, derive all the operations of arithmetic with fractions, with numbers, uh, difference, sum, quotient, and multiplication in that order. Yes, in that order. I bet you didn't know that. And you get, you don't have sum unless you have difference. Okay, sum is not the most primitive operator. Difference is. So this proposition here, it's stated in a very difficult way to understand. But what, is, what it's basically saying to you is this, that if you have any triangle like that, right? <clears throat> and you decide, well, you've got this length here, let's call it P and let's call it Q. And you decide to add or subtract a, a, a length from each side where this line here is parallel to this line, then, then always whatever fraction you get, it's going to be equal to the original fraction, okay? What this is telling you is this. It's saying to you that if you have something like 9 twelfths and you say subtract a, a fraction that's in proportion. So we know that we know that uh, 
three quarters is in proportion, right? So we subtract three and we subtract four. And that will give us six over eight, right? Does that make sense? So 6 over 8 <clears throat> is an equivalent fraction. And we can again subtract uh, from this fraction another 3 over 4 like that. And we'd get 3 quarters. Okay, And we can get back to this 9 twelfths by simply adding 3 quarters. Okay, What this means is that if you have any fraction PQ, it means that you can add as many times as you like the top part to itself and the bottom part to itself and whatever you get here will always be equal to the original fraction okay do you understand that that's what equivalent fractions are all about and this method here i explain in my article called theory of fractions and also in my famous book called the ultimate book of numbers and i show you even how to derive all these operations from scratch so now, you cannot, for example, if, you're, if you have, let's say, three quarters and you decide, oh, what happens if I subtract three quarters like that? Well, guess what's going to happen? You, you're just going to have a point here. That, 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 that is meaningless in geometry. You don't get zero over zero because that's garbage. Okay, That's not what you get. Zero over zero is not a number. It's not a proportion. It's not a measure. <clears throat> zero doesn't measure anything, not even itself. Okay, so you cannot say P over Q is equal to P over Q is equal to P minus P over Q minus Q because that is, there is no non-zero, there's no uh, zero magnitude in geometry. Okay, so you cannot just slide this line down to this point here and this line down to this point because then you don't have a distance. You don't have a distance, you morons. Do you understand that? All your arithmetic comes from similar triangles. Grow a brain. Listen to me. I know better than you. I know better than the smartest of your professors and those fools who call themselves mathematicians. They're not even mathematicians, arses. Okay, I am a mathematician, a real mathematician. Now, I'm telling you these things. You need to sit up and pay attention because no doubt you're a likely little moron who, who suffers from Dunning-Kruger just like your professors and teachers do and you think you know better. Before you post a comment in my section, be very careful. If you post crap, I will ban you from commenting on my channel. I don't have time for idiots, so don't post crap on my channel, please. Go take a shit on your channel or somebody else's. Do you understand me? Good. Now that we have that out of the way, let's see what this idiot says. So he says, is that still the same as multiplying by one? Well, that's not even wrong. You cannot multiply. When you have something like this, x minus 1 over x minus 1, it's considered to be a factor in mathematics, okay? You don't do anything with it, stupid. You cancel it out. What is so hard to understand about that? You can't say, what happens if you put 0 into x? You cannot put 0 into x there, you fucking moron. Do you understand me? You're so incorrigibly stupid, and you, you need to wake up. You do not put zero into an expression like that. You can't put zero in there because zero is not a number, you fucking moron. Oh. Right. Now, look at how this guy carries on. He says, is zero a zero number? So he doesn't even know what is a number, okay? He has no clue what is a number. Let's continue. If zero, so uh, first of all, he didn't watch the video carefully. He just got on here to argue. If zero is not a number, then do you think zero over zero can be a number? How stupid can you get? I didn't mean to do that. In algebra, this is a number, okay? And it can only mean one, nothing else. We don't care what x minus one is. Dumbwits, it's a number. In the video, I show you how your perspective is vague and illogical through the example sine x is equal to x over the square root of this expression. By the way, this is a new closed form formula for uh, sine x, and I've recently revealed some fantastic knowledge to the world, which the morons of the last thousand, few thousand years of humanity couldn't realize. And you can read about that in an article to which I'll place a link called Ancient Greek trigonometric formulas, okay? So we never put 
anything in an expression like x minus k over x minus k or drivel over drivel or idiot like you over idiot like you. Do you get it? Only a prize idiot like your math teacher substitutes any value for x into such an expression. Geometrically, geometrically, the expression x over x means one, you morons. You don't get to put anything inside there. What you need to do is put on some brains. All your algebraic arithmetic comes from one proposition in Euclid's elements. Which one? The one I just showed you, idiots. The one which you wouldn't understand even if you could live a thousand years. Heath says this is what it represents in modern notation. Actually, this modern notation comes from this geometry, okay? You wouldn't have algebra, you wouldn't have arithmetic. You'd have absolutely nothing if the Greeks thought of zero as a number. Do you understand that? Try to understand that. Try not to be an idiot like you are. So you claim that the expression x over x can only ever be equal to one. So he's asking me, what's your proof of this? You know, I can't believe he asked that question. <laughs> what else can it be? Tell me, what do you think? Why And why would I need to provide a proof? But I show him, I say, x over x is equal to the measure of the ratio x to itself. There is a count of one in both aliquot parts, one x and one x, meaning it's one over one, which is abbreviated as one. You see, mainstream mathematics morons don't understand the concept of number. Let me repeat the definition. A number is a name. <laughs> given to a measure that describes a ratio of magnitudes. Okay, a magnitude is not a number. Out of sheer curiosity, what else can x over x be? So he continues, let's see. And how is your measure function defined? So you see, obviously, this poor fool has been his brain is being polluted by crap like Lebesgue measure and all other uh, worthless bullshit concepts that one finds in mainstream courses such as real analysis, uh, metric spaces and the like. Okay, I'm saying x over x could be a number but could also be an indeterminate form. No, it cannot be an indeterminate form which is not a number. This is not a number, so it cannot be that. X over X cannot be that. That's why I'm saying it's not even wrong. So, and again, here's my answer. No, X over X can never be zero over zero because zero over zero is not a number and it's not just indeterminate, it's nonsense. In algebra, X is a symbol for a number. Zero is not a number, and if indeed one wrote x squared over x is equal to x times x over x and thought that x over x could be zero over zero, that person has no business doing mathematics. Okay. Now, you can normally get away by writing zero over x, or you think you can get away, but all that you're doing is you're just discarding that uh, term because, first of all, no actual division happens, and there is no number zero over x because... Uh, zero over x means no number, okay? It means no number. What is the main role of zero? The main role of zero is to be a placeholder, okay? So in this article, I explained to you uh, why you wouldn't have arithmetic operations if Greek sort of zero. Here I give you the role of zero, and I tell you that it means no number or placeholder. In this article, I explain again in in conversations with uh, chatbots, uh, all different types of uh, concerns and topics. And so I'm, I'm going to give you links to all these six articles so that you can look over them. Uh, I'm kind of out of breath right now. I think I'm on a high this morning. So what I'll do is I'll finish up by saying, if you're not already a raised subscriber, become one. Become a subscriber to my channel. Yes, I do know better than you. My IQ is above 160. What's yours? <laughs> never mind now uh tell your friends about this become a follower on academia there will be links placed to this as well and cough out a few dollars if you can you know i'm not rich at all in fact i'm living below the poverty line because of the persecution that has been leveled against me by vicious mainstream academics
some of some of who might even be watching these videos they're constantly trying to shut me down okay they've tried many times in the past that they've actually shut down my channels and i've battled to get them back up again so i must be doing something right if they're persecuting me so hard uh anyway i'm john gabriel this is a new calculus channel till next time goodbye